Muncher. In a world filled with war, hate, suffering, and Justin Bieber, two guys fix it all with a battle about a movie. One film, two opinions, one coin, two sides. They feud. You decide. It's time for Film Feud. Welcome to Film Feud. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Vidur. Hi, Vidur. Hi, who? Vikram. Hi, Vikram. What's happening? Ready to feud? Yeah. I'm always ready to feud with you, you little bitch. <laughs> bring it, dude. Bring it. I think I upped it a little too early. <laughs> before even knowing what the movie is. It's all good, bro. It's all good. Friendly competition. So what are we doing here exactly, Vikram? We're choosing a movie from the IMDb Top 250 randomly. Randomly. And then tossing a coin, assigning each other sides, and feuding. That's right. So why don't we start by figuring out what film we're going to feud over. Ready to spin the film feud wheel? Do it. Let's do it. So we got num. Oh man, this is going to be fucked up. We got number 42, The Departed. Oh man, The Departed. What's with the oh man? Well, it's a Martin Scorsese movie. Oh, I've heard of that guy. He won an Oscar. I just remembered this is the only movie he won an Oscar for, didn't he? How sad is that? So we have DiCaprio, Sheen, Baldwin, Wahlberg. Who else? Like, the main guys. Damon. Damon, of course. Matt Damon. Shit, dude. This is, like, stacked, huh? I will make a proclamation before the coin toss here. (laughs) Okay. This is perhaps... I know that's not a very strong word for a proclamation. This is arguably Mark Wahlberg's best performance ever. Can we find some common ground? Sure, sure. I agree. I agree. This was his... Better than his best, it was his most entertaining performance. For sure. Because I feel like he was just himself. Like all the rage from do- making all the terrible choices he's made in life, he was allowed to express on Leonardo DiCaprio in this movie. And it just worked. Let's also agree on his casting as one of the highlights of this movie. I mean, everyone else is great. Obviously, they're great actors and all. Mark Wahlberg's not in the same category as all the other great actors in this movie, but he still holds his own because of the role In he this has. movie, he yeah. does, yeah. 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 Another thing worth mentioning is that I have watched the movie The Departed is based on, Infernal Affairs. Have you? I actually saw it before I watched The Departed. Whoa. Yeah, what a hipster. Yeah. What a cinematic Hip- hipster. Intellectual. Name one hipster who'd probably seen the Korean movie before. It's uh, Korean, correct? <laughs> no, it's not. It's a Hong Kong movie. Oh, fuck, it's a Hong Kong movie. I've seen Infernal Fest 1 and 2. That's crazy. You were watching foreign films in 2006? Dude, we were like fucking 18, 19 in uh, 2006. I, ha- I wasn't done with all the English, Hindi films that were on the table at the time. Now you, I'm done, you, by the way. You were still watching Hey Arnold in Nickelodeon? No, I was still watching Dexter in Hindi. <laughs> do you know the do you know the song from Dexter and Hindi? Dexter K Lab Me or Didi Karti hai. <laughs> Is it Didi or Didi? It's Didi. No, but I, know what's it. I, don't I know think what in it Hindi is. it's Didi because she's his Didi. <laughs> oh my god. My mind is just blown right now. <laughs> anyway, we have the departed man. This is gonna be an exciting episode. I'm stoked. Alright, so before we get into this high stakes coin toss, let's just take a moment to thank our sponsors. Vikram, who's our sponsor this week? Our sponsor for this episode of Film Feud is the art slash dance form of Kalarai Pattu. Uh, excuse me? Kalarai Pattu. Kalarai Pattu. So it's like color, mm-hmm. like red, green, yellow. I, right. as in the things we see with. Yeah, yeah. Pat, as in the thing you do in golf. And two as in the number two. We have four sponsors. Exactly. But none of that makes any sense. This is the dance form of Kalarai Pattu. It's the most ancient martial arts form in the world. I know what Kalarai Pattu, man. What's what's it all about? It's these dudes who are fighting against each other. It's a martial art. So did they send us anything? Did they send us, you know, anything for the sponsorship? Yes. Good vibes and happiness and positivity. 
well, I can't sell any of that shit. But all right, thank you so much for sponsoring this podcast. Moving on, let's let's get on with the coin toss. Vidur, do you want to explain what what happens here? I'll be the subject of the coin toss this time. And if it comes heads, then I argue for the movie. And when it comes tails, then I argue against the movie. And I may or may not be rooting for one of those sides right now. <laughs> <laughs> don't 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 even try to influence the coin. And it heads. I am arguing for the departed by Mr. Martin Scorsese, the one he won an Oscar for, the one with all the superstars. Dude, Infernal Affairs was so much better. Oh, was it? Because I think I, fe- I feel like because I saw it. You know what? Let's save all of this. I cannot wait for this. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wah, wah, wah. I think I let's just... cannot wait. I mean, neither can I. It's the most excited I am about a film feud, to be honest. Interesting. TBH, IMO, LOL. SYP shitting your pants at the thought of arguing <laughs> <laughs> against S-Y-P. the departed. SYP, huh? All right, let's do it. Let's go watch the movie. Let's do this. Wah, wah, la, 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 wah, wah. This movie sucked. Sucked. I don't understand what you're going to say in this episode. This movie is so good. Dude, the Vera Farminga was in this movie. Did you know that? <laughs> I had totally forgotten about her. I knew you'd bring her up. It doesn't matter. Her character is great. What? She, this is the hottest she's ever looked. I've seen like five movies with her. And she, this movie is so good. Can we just look at the forest <laughs> for the trees over here? This is like... The most watchable Scorsese movie of all time. Really? Along with Goodfellas. It's, I could just watch it over and over again. I probably have watched it 10 times already. I mean, I've seen it. I've seen it a lot of times as well. And then definitely... Boom. Gotcha. <laughs> right. And Infernal Affairs kicks this movie's ass so hard. So f***ing hard. It's not even funny, right? Why is it that you always have the hipster stance on things? What is... I watch a movie which is non-English and I'm a hipster all of a sudden. Oh, The Arrival is based on the short story and the short story is better. Which it is and the short story is so much better. Oh, Infernal Affairs. Wait, 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 wait. Post that episode, whichever episode that was, I distinctly remember you saying that you read the short story as well and how good it was as compared to Arrival. That wasn't recorded. (laughs) (laughs) All right, all right. Fair enough, fair enough. Actually, I knew you'd bring this up. So let's just get it out of the way. Let's talk about Infernal Affairs. I watched Infernal Affairs as well. I saw it after The Departed. I thought it was okay. It was great. It was weaker. It wasn't English, bro, firstly. (laughs) I mean, I should count against it. But I mean, even if you want to acknowledge Infernal Affairs, okay, it's great. But that just means Departed is the greatest remake of all time. Why is this the greatest remake of all time? Because Infernal Affairs was like this typical like Hong Kong, Cantonese, basically like an action like police movie you know it was 40 minutes shorter so none of the characters were as fleshed out it just like got to the point boom 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 this this that cop 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 rat 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 in Departed they actually fleshed the characters out they make it firstly fit perfectly with this whole Irish mob in Boston Mm -hmm. Infernal Affairs doesn't have Irish bosses Jack Nicholson no Jack Nicholson right of course because he's not Chinese yeah that's well point to me then (laughs) not Chinese (laughs) Fair enough, fair enough. Not really, but fair enough. Just the performances from the A-list cast of this movie puts it way above Infernal Affairs. You don't even need to get into anything else. I mean, you can't even compare. This is like Martin Sheen at his best. Alec Baldwin with his little tie at his best. (laughs) Mark Wahlberg with his hair at his best. Leonardo DiCaprio killing it as always. Matt Damon. We will, we will. Killing it as always. We will obviously be jumping into the acting in this movie because it's a it's a big, big segment and it's and it's sort of not avoidable because of the the sheer force of the cast. But just coming back to Infernal Affairs again, it's I saw it before The Departed. The Departed did impress me, but uh, just Martin Scorsese and and the sheer force he is in filmmaking did not do justice to it. A, because I still found Infernal Affairs the better movie. Oh, you know who disagrees with you? The Academy of Motion Pictures. Obviously, because Infernal Affairs will not get the Academy Award for Best Picture. But still, I mean, it's it's a much better movie. And again, coming back to our point, of which we discuss about a lot, is that IMDb Top 250 has a lot of good movies, but a lot of good movies are not on there. And I feel like 
I don't even know if Infernal Affairs is on it or not, but Do it should be. Do you remember Infernal Affairs? Yes, of remember? course. Okay, one of the hardest hitting scenes in The Departed is when Martin Sheen, Captain Queen, and dies. It's so brutal. It's so hard hitting. It comes out of nowhere and it completely like fucks Leonardo DiCaprio's character. The same scene when it happens in Infernal Affairs is like a soap opera. Like he dies and then suddenly there's a black and white flashback to when the superintendent was interacting with uh, Di- DiCaprio's counterpart. And then there's like this soap opera music and it's super sad and it's like forcing you and telling you what to feel. It's just weaker filmmaking. So that one scene is the reason that Infernal Affairs is an inferior movie as compared to The Departed. No, that and everything else. Infernal Affairs has... Not, a cool... not that that drop dropkick ball sack song that The Departed has. Infer- <laughs> Infernal Affairs has a cooler name. The name. The name. I actually think The Departed is a cooler name. No, Infernal Affairs. Do you get the name Infernal Affairs, you peasant? (laughs) (laughs) It's a play. Let me teach you something. Okay, sure, sure. Let me learn you a little something. Infernal Affairs is a play on the phrase internal affairs, a police thing. And infernal means like infernal, like hell. Actually, it's pretty cool because the Chinese title apparently meant the unceasing parts. And it was a reference to like hell. And so Infernal, as in hell, Infernal Affairs. So I grant you one thing, that Infernal Affairs got better than de- The Departed. I Fuck it. I, name doesn't matter to me. If the movie was called Movie 1, it still would have been a better picture than The Departed. Let's just take a step back. I mean, sure. I mean, overall, I think this is the best, you know, yin-yang, cops and robbers movie I've seen since uh, Michael Mann's Heat. Is there any other movie you think that compares? Heat is so <laughs> good. Why'd you bring that up? I just want to talk about Heat now. It goes Departed. It's heat. Right below that heat. It's heat. And right below that Infernal Affairs. It's heat. Heat. And then maybe Infernal Affairs and Departed. A million other pictures in the contention. But heat is number one, dude. The Departed managed to flesh out characters better. Thereby investing us better. For instance, Matt Damon apparently in The Departed can't get it up. It was like this little plot point that I had forgotten about. I mean, I realized it when I was watching it this time around. Infernal Affairs doesn't have the time to flesh out things like that. Whereas The Departed does. It tells you so much more about the character. Erectile dysfunction. Ugh. Academy Awards, what the fuck are you doing, man? Or the Academy okay. of Motion Pictures and Sciences and Theories, whatever the fuck it's called. I might concede that this was wow. more of a lifetime achievement. Wow. It wasn't it? Wasn't it? It okay. has to be. It has to be. Like, he gets best director for The fucking Departed, which is a remake of a movie. But, and all the shit he did in his past and beyond The Departed as well. Wow. You don't get an Academy Award for... Making your best movie. You get an Academy Award for making the best movie that year. I mean, oh, it was literally, you're absolutely correct. It was a Lifetime Award, the Bette Midler, whatever the Lifetime Award. Why do you think is. this is helping you in any way? Because this movie does not, dis- because this movie did not deserve the best film Oscar. Okay. I grant you that. Now, All right. Let's move on then. That doesn't mean this movie is not hilarious. One, something the movie doesn't get enough credit for. No, this no, movie no, no, is no. so funny. I'll tell you what's funny. Mark Wahlberg. That's it. Mark Wahlberg is hilarious. Mark Wahlberg is the best actor in this movie. And the sad part about that is that Mark Wahlberg isn't even acting. He's just being himself. That's great. Perfect casting then. And to 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 be the best actor in a cast that includes DiCaprio, Matt Damon, Charlie Sheen. All right. I'm not granting him Martin. That. He <laughs> might be the funniest part of this movie. He's Martin Sheen, Jack Nicholson. They're so old that they don't even act anymore. They're just themselves, right? They're, they're, that's what they are. Have you seen Jack Nicholson on a courtside game for the Lakers? He always has that cape fear, the shining eyebrows, and then that that smile that's always that's become like a synonymous Jack Nicholson smile. So that's what he was doing in this movie? These guys were just being themselves. They weren't acting. Martin, they're, they're Martin great. Sheen was being himself, like the president from the West Wing. And this role... Was there any difference? Exactly the They're same. great actors, but then they're so thoroughbred and full-fledged in terms of their profession that that's how they are. You can't... Every, every, every movie or show... Or whatever media thing they're in, they're the same. They're great. It's it's a very, very awesome thing that they do. But then they're not the best actors out there. So, Leo, the, the, Leo, in my opinion, is a good actor. But he was, very, <laughs> he was very... Stop talking. He was very all the right. Up. <laughs> At no point in the movie Jack Nicholson did closest to The Departed, which I think was Something's Gotta Give or As Good As Gets, or one of those two. Was he ever doing like this impression of a rat? Or was he ever holding a person's severed hand while... Waxing poetic about the Irish mafia. Or was he ever <laughs> having sex with hookers while throwing fistfuls of cocaine at them? By the way, interesting trivia. Apparently, Jack Nicholson made Martin Scorsese shoot like a full sex scene with like these hookers. 
and unfortunately I mean, only two seconds of it made it in the movie he's a weird guy that's fine he's he, so funny in the movie he's so fucked up and he's so funny i mean apart from that, some that's of the most himself that's him he is fucked up uh, and probably got, funny like that in real life Martin Sheen and Jack Nicholson are great actors. Whenever you put them in a movie, it's a no-brainer. They're going to knock it out of the park. And they did, sort of, in their own way. It was nothing extraordinary, in my opinion. That's why I keep saying Mark Wahlberg was... Mark Wahlberg was the reason this movie was entertaining. And and the way it was. Otherwise, it would have been just uh, a super me, bland let me, movie. Let me tell you, like, five lines that were hilarious. None of which were said by the by Mark Wahlberg. I have to say your vulnerability is freaking me out right now. That was the worst line in the movie. Wow. I'll grant you that. Wow. What about the fact then? I mean, they show how psychotic Jack Nicholson is when he kills someone. And then he, he goes, geez, she fell funny. And then his like French, the Mr. French guy just goes like, dude, you should really see somebody. Shit like that. He Like the most fucked up so shit okay. became so funny. No. That's What about oh, some of the characters? Like the Indian dude, Babu, <laughs> who runs the store. Yeah, yeah. That, that one saved the movie, huh? That guy, the yeah, Indian yeah, yeah. guy. For sure. Little Babu. Mm-hmm. Just, I love Jack Nicholson in this movie, man. Like, some people find his uh, performance hammy and over the top. But his one-liners simply are amazing. Like, when they ask him, the Jack Nicholson asks that guy, like, how's your mother? And he just says, oh, you know, she's not doing too well. She's on her way out. And then he goes, like, we all are. Act accordingly. This is genius. It's pure gold. And without Jack Nicholson delivering it the way he did, it wouldn't have worked either. See, that, that's where I disagree. I mean, those one-liners are good. They're entertaining. They're typical Martin Scorsese. My only contention here is Martin Scorsese usually kills it with the movie because of the amount of work he puts in. Plus, he brings that flair, that Scorsese flair into it. In this situation, he picked up Infernal Affairs, made it a little better, and then added the Scorsese flair, which comes very naturally to him after making so many movies and so many of them so well. And he adapted it into the Irish Mafia, like Jack Nicholson well, That's a channeling. no-brainer, I would think. Either New York or the Irish Mafia would have been the only ways he could have added the whole mo- mole police sort of situation. The here. triad element from Infernal. Right. Yeah, but he's adapted really well because Jack Nicholson is channeling Whitey Bugler apparently from right, uh, right. from his heydays uh, in the I mob mean there are, there are like a hundred gangsters who could have been the character again it's nothing special here your point about Jack Nicholson delivering those one liners I mean dude if it would have been any other seasoned actor I would say the one liners would have worked as well imagine like Christopher walking in that role and just because he's walking and he's so that'd good that would be hilarious that'd I be agree. hilarious so but it wouldn't not, be as menacing no I think it would be Walken has this fucking sinisterism to him that really kills it Walken just he just makes me want to laugh every time he speaks because of all the parodies you've seen of him but he would have still killed it I'm, my point he here would. is my, my be point, so funny yeah yeah. my point here is any seasoned actor would have done what Nicholson done and it would have been as good and because that's Scorsese's element with um, the, the lines and the way it's supposed to be delivered it's nothing that Nicholson brought to the table in this situation. All right, forget forget this like individual performance and stuff. I mean, this Mark movie, Wahlberg, bro. I get it, Mark Wahlberg was the best actor. <laughs> Jesus. All right. The all guy right. who's who's just being himself is the saving grace of acting in a movie directed by Martin Scorsese. Oh my god, that's terrible. With like f-ing 13 Oscar nominations between them with all these actors, I think like some of them have won. Nicholson has one, right? I'm assuming he does. Yeah, of course, Nicholson yeah. has Oscars. So yeah, he's one of the greatest actors of our time. That you're just yeah. constantly shitting on that I'm letting you for some. I reason. mean, as good as it gets was really good, and that was a comedy. <laughs> so Nicholson is is he's again. I'm, I didn't say he's bad. He's good. He's a seasoned actor. But any seasoned actor would have done justice. What to about that Matt role. Damon? Matt Damon is doing his best Matt Damon since he did Matt Damon and Goodwill Hunting. No man, I think I think Matt Damon was all right. He wasn't nothing special in this movie. Yes. DiCaprio, I think, was slightly better than him. DiCaprio needed to act better than him. Right. Alec Baldwin's so funny in this movie. Alec Baldwin is again Alec Baldwin. No, he's not. He's Bostonian Alec Baldwin. Isn't he from Boston? No, no, but. But he's like so angry all the time. He's just like such a fuse. Right. And the part where he punches the guy for not putting the cameras in the back during the Chinese deal is so funny. And I just can't stop laughing at his tie throughout the movie. He just wears his Alec, tie like really Alec, tiny. I, I agree with you. Alec Baldwin and Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg, obviously, because he had a bigger role and more lines and stuff like that. And dude, I mean, both of them were hilarious because they were just always off the rails, always angry yeah. and just cursing at people. So that... That whole element plus Corsese trying to like guide them in terms of what I've been meaning to, to give a tribute to Mark Wahlberg's performance during this podcast. And uh, I don't know if this will come up organically. So I can't I'm just wait. Go- so I'm just going to ask you. I can't wait. Why don't you ask me a question? For instance, uh, ask me... <laughs> Is Heat a better movie than The Departed? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe f*** yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty bad. I didn't know if I'd be able to squeeze it in otherwise.
I can think of a hundred situations where I squeeze that in. All right, if it comes up, I'll re-squeeze it, and <laughs> we'll all enjoy. I can't wait. I can't wait for that re-squeeze. Also, like, I mean, so fuck everything else. If this movie was made in Bollywood, it would probably be called like Khule Aam Bakhti or some shit. क्या आप कुछ भी हो रहा है यार मूवी में लाइक कोई आ रहा है इसको गोली मार दी कोई आ रहा है उसको गोली मार दी कोई ही अ ही अ मोल ही इज एन अंडर कवर गाय ही किल्स सम डूट फ्रॉम द फ्रॉम द क्रू एंड द गाय इज नेवर आस्ट फॉर अगेन जैक निकल्सन हैज नो आइडिया हु द मोल इज पूरे रास्ते ही इज स्टैंड इंटिमिडेट एवरी वन इट्स फुल पावर बी दी इंटायर टाइम वॉट द हेल डूट Yeah, it's Bostonian bug shit, man. It's the most oh, watchable bug shit there is. That shit, dude. Like, how come there isn't a Bollywood version of this movie yet? That's the most surprising part. It'll be cool, yeah, but shit, it came out. It's not at least obviously because there's so much cussing and like bug shit happening and like gang violence and stuff. There Literally, is- Anurag Kashyap will take this on. Have six main actors, including Nawazuddin Siddiqui, and then they'll just shoot each other. That's the movie. Wow, fart ke hath mein aa gayi. But there is a lot of cussing though. Apparently, the word. and his derivatives are used 237 times in the movie which is once about every 38 seconds i think our podcast is usually on course for that though i think i think i i went really i went really into it um on the city of god episode that yeah. that might have a lot of cuss words because you hated brazilian poor people too much <laughs> that happens happens to the best of us <laughs> i mean dude uh So do this this movie's like just piss me off at points man so martin sheen acting as that pseudo father figure for um leo and then you know on the opposite that was straight end. out of infernal where like uh he becomes like a super father figure gives him the watch and shit and then that's why that's why his death becomes more emotionally resonant sure yeah and then on the opposite end is jack nicholson and then him being that pseudo father figure for damon like, which is really fucked up because he calls him dad which is so weird but in the end he he has he has to kill his father figure which makes emotional stakes there as yeah, well yeah so coming back to it maybe another title for a bollywood remake of this could be like papa kehte the or some shit man <laughs> it's such a it's just like he's like he picked up infernal affairs hashed it out fixed it into this plot line for i don't know more characters because he's like bro bana dete hain he's like i'll put it's a boston thing no brainer put martin uh, put mark wolberg in it let's just added let it be a sex scene added a sex wow. scene wow rocket science right too comfortably numb that B- rocket made me happy and who was in the sex scene i just remembered vera farminga so forgettable <laughs> Why so are you calling fu- her farminga what's her name <laughs> she's not from the philippines dude oh it's farminga <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> is that is that even her name who is she it's she so was hot f- she was hot oh, wow even the sex scene is like so emotionally scary cuz she's cheating on mad demon and did you cry the- did you cry bro she's all i might have shed a tear oh sex scene Okay and he did other things too he added a lot of symbolism in the movie that wasn't there in infernal he also added really cool shit like you know there's an x every time a character is going to die like you know little easter eggs here and there and then the symbolism you know the little uh, city hall that Matt Damon is looking at the rat at the end which i understand a little bit on the nose what the fuck was up with that rat dude all right it's a little bit on the nose you know because they were rats. a little bit a little bit a little bit there's a rat at the end you know jack nicholson was obsessed with rats they did something similar as well let me think they I, they the name the departed when they just like they just put it in there they shoe horn the name the departed it's fine <sighs> you get to hear mad damon say the departed in his bostonian accent that's always fun and then there's there's other stuff shoe horn into this movie that feels like a shoe horn but is actually telling it's fleshing out boston as another character for instance uh, shadow to spotlight jack nicholson is talking to those priests about molesting the children shout out shout out diner. to spotlight yeah. cuz cuz they knew spotlight was going to be a thing well i mean i, I think you they did it they did it before spotlight they, they just offhandedly do it which shows nicholson's attitude towards it but it does showcase another element of boston it's it's con- constantly fleshing out boston as a character yeah because uh, Scorsese is like bro New York bahut ho gaya yaar ab kahin aur chalte hain kahan chale Boston wahan pe bada mafia shafia hai wahan pe chalo acha Mark Wahlberg ko dal dete hain sab sahi scene ho jayega what a fucking mixture huh? he's like he's like that professor guy from power puff girls who's mixing the sugar spice everything nice in a bucket and then fucking something and out, just happens out come power puff girls the greatest <laughs> superhero baby team on the planet <laughs> what what do you think they'd be doing right Queen now and commander and the leader <laughs> Wolberg he's the toughest fighter Baldwin he's the joy and the laughter <laughs> Nicholson oh, says the day <laughs> yeah fighting no, stop, crime stop no. now so he's that's that score say see in this movie that's why i did not like it as much as his other movies because it's clearly lifted he did a little bit uh, that slight tweak to it 
pushed it into Boston, made the story fit in there, got a couple of guys who had natural Boston accents and a couple of guys who are good actors who can pull off one. And then he just let it go from there. So disappointing, dude. Okay, since you didn't like it so much, why don't you tell me what you would replace it in the IMDb Top 250 with? This was 42 on the Top 250, right? Yeah. I mean, Bhul Bhulaya would be a good option. <laughs> I really think Rajpal Yadav deserves an Oscar for that picture, dude. He's so good. He's so amazing in your botchy words. Name an English movie you would replace this with. Mm, an English movie I would replace this with. Team America, World Police does the job, I think. Okay, I can't hate on that movie because it's really good. But how can you even compare acclamation to the genius performances, direction? It's music? more original. Music, drop, that's not a, drop, that's not drop, a criteria. drop kick, ball sacks. What was that? <laughs> I'm shipping up to Boston. Uh, come on, dude. I mean, like, zade Boston, Boston, ho gaya tha, yaar. Malab, you could have just like one scene could have been like these guys sitting in a Celtics game also, just like just for the f of it. The f man, enough of the Boston guys. It's a, it's a character in the movie. Why don't you understand it? You're too much of a basic, bitch, basic level movie watcher. <laughs> you don't understand the subtext, you don't understand like the X's represent the deaths. And it's like in The Godfather, the oranges represent deaths. Here, the X's represent death. It's an homage to The Godfather. Okay, firstly, over the course of this podcast, you've implied slash called me a Basak patch <laughs> twice now. And twice you have blamed me for Trump being elected in office. And secondly, how can you even think of comparing this or trying to force this to be a homage to The Godfather in any way? Any gangster movie that anyone makes is not a homage or maybe they try to make it in their mind. But this movie is is the furthest from The Godfather as possible. Please take that back. No, Team America World Police is the furthest from The Godfather <laughs> as possible. I, I nev- Because see, I know it's not an homage. It's, it's a completely different movie, but I think it's an apt replacement. I stand by my word, bro. Also, I want to come back to a major f***ing hole in the plot of this movie. Mm-hmm. Is it the fact that Jack Nicholson has a giant black cock? <laughs> <laughs> Anything Jack Nicholson is ignored. Because I think he was very forceful over the top in this picture. And I don't even want to get into that because I'll never stop just berating him, which I don't want to. Honestly, I'm a fan. But everything he does is so over the top. It's just, it's just annoying at points. But I'm talking about the microchips. Do you remember the microchips? I do remember the microchips. What the, the fuck my- happened to the microchips, man? The what last, happened to the Chinese? What happened to all of that? The last I remember is that the Chinese had fake microchips. Right, and that's it. And they're like, oh, fake microchips. We can make this work. Let's go. Bye. And they're out. Yeah. The Chinese deal was kind of dumb. <laughs> it was just there. It was just there as a character building scene for the f*** of it. Also, that means Nicholson has microchips that can end the world, but they're just gone an now. I- an Irish Bostonian mobster has microchips that can start World War 3. I think that was pretty specifically said in the movie. Uh Uh-huh. But they're gone. And nobody knows where they are. No, no. He gives them fake ones. Where are the real ones? And then no one even cares. These Boston PD guys just want to like kill each other and that's all they care about. Look at him. It probably adds to his character. Like at the end of it, when it comes down to it, he's not willing to give the Chinese world-ending technology. He f***s them over. He (laughs) protects our country. So win, win, win. It added a lot of light to Whitey Bugler, in fact. Right? Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, where are they right now? <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, that's such a big, big plot hole. And it's so obvious dude, that they didn't address it at all. Dude, don't worry about it. Mark Wahlberg, Dignam will take care of it. <laughs> Dignam. Dignam's he's, a man, He's on a dude. spree just cleaning up everything that Nicholson and Matt Damon did. Also, that, that last scene where um, he just shows up at, at Damon's house. Yeah. Like, if you think about it, how does he know? How does he know that Damon's a guy? There's, there's so many ways he could have known. They don't bother showing it. Like maybe DiCaprio told him. Maybe he just figured it DiCaprio out. DiCaprio did not tell him because they were never in contact very specifically during the movie. But he asks for Dignam, right? He asks Anthony Anderson to bring Dignam. So Anthony Anderson is in this movie. <laughs> yes. Killing it. Crucial yes. role at the end. Yep. Yep. Getting shot. So important. Getting shot is important yep. in this movie. The movie is The Departed. They were they were like, oh, they were, uh, yeah, yeah. That's how they knew each other, right? They were like uh, cadets, cadets together. Cadets together, right. Yeah. Actually, really interesting. Thing, the correct thing reminded me infernal affairs starts out i mean the very first scene in the movie is right. the mob guy prepping the 10 people who he's sending into the police academy right right whereas here it's not clear that there's more than one mole so the final thing the elevator sequence when like matt damon's little mm-hmm. inf- inferior officer turns out to be another uh, jack nicholson mole that's an awesome scene it's like a crazy reveal 
that Infernal Affairs didn't bother with. I thought that was really cool. Because I remember very much watching the movie for the first time and just being blown away because it's not something I saw coming. Right. And then to that, there are a lot of theories out there that Mark Wahlberg's also one of the moles. Yeah, but isn't that one of those like high, like crazy Star Wars conspiracy Any Anything that enhances Wahlberg's role in this movie, I'm down for it. So yes, he was another mole for shiz. Maybe he's a mole. Mm-hmm. Maybe he isn't. Maybe go f*** yourself. Oh, shit he did it not bad not bad i'm pretty impressed with that one man thanks but then yeah dude i mean it's just too much happening it's too much bullshit too much shooting for no reason too much killing off characters getting new characters forcefully trying to build them out flesh them out it's all right i'm so gonna... much over the top i'm not a fan okay i'm gonna treat that as your summary you peasant please say peasant, peasant. <laughs> nice so original <laughs> Actually, one thing I forgot to mention, speaking of peasants, is that my uh, little cussing vocabulary got expanded thanks to this movie. I learned so much, like uh, uh, so many Irish insults, mix, guineas, lace curtain, something. <laughs> I don't know why they kept saying lace curtain. I wasn't aware of that as an expression. Apparently, yeah. The Departed is what made that expression popular. Right. Really cool. Really cool. In summary, for me, this movie was hilarious. This movie was amazing. This movie just has such good editing. Such great tension building. Performances are so good. They're so richly conceived that, uh, you know, I, I wish this movie was five hours long, honestly. It's it's like the great, the best sign of a movie or a TV show is that you don't want it to end. When the credits roll, you wish there was more. And that was definitely the case with this movie. My favorite book growing up was uh, Cain and Abel. You've read Cain and Abel, right? Jeffrey Archer, bro. Jeffrey Archer all the way. And mm. uh, even even in seventh grade, when I was reading Cain and Abel, I remember thinking, I wish Scorsese would make... A movie about Cain and Abel. And turns out he did. This is like the best Cain and Abel yin and yang movie <laughs> ever made. It just it just is surrounded by like cops and robbers and Boston and Irish mafia. But oh, it's basically man. Cain and Abel. It's amazing. Yeah. I think this movie was the biggest charity case for the Oscars ever. Because they just felt bad for Scorsese. So they're like, bro, picture le le, director le le, aur kya chahiye, ye bhi le le, usko bhi de dete hain. And then it's... Uh, it's actually disrespectful. If I was Scorsese and these guys would have invited me to the Oscars saying that you're nominated for best movie and best director, I would have been like, fuck off for this movie. And then when they would have actually given it, I would have stood up, got out in the aisle and walked backwards out of the theater with my middle fingers up and be like, go f*** yourself. No, he would have departed the Oscars. <laughs> he should have departed the Oscars, which he didn't. He just went up there with his eyebrows and then he's like, thanks charity case to it i hate it it's disrespectful and f- the oscars even if i grant everything you just said about the oscar at least it's more deserved than al pacino for scent of a woman scent of a woman are you kidding me you think al pacino in scent of a woman was more deserving of an oscar like a lifetime achievement as you're calling it than martin scorsese in this movie what are you talking about i don't think that was a lifetime achievement award i think al pacino acted really well in that movie you it- didn't like it it's okay i mean he just got it for the godfather and everything no man didn't. what and are you Serpico. saying what are you saying dude he was so good in that movie all right different argument the point is the departed most watchable scorsese movie ever best scorsese movie from the 2000s uh, gangs of new york come on dude yeah but like boston being fleshed out is so much better than some period piece about new york oh and my God. also best remake of all time uh, I can't think of any other remakes, so I can see at that point. Boom! <laughs> but uh, definitely not Scorsese's best movie. I think I read this somewhere and I completely agree with it. Not only is this not Scorsese's best movie, but it is not even the best version of this movie. Yeah, yeah, I get it. You watch Infernal Affairs first. Even if you watch it second, how can you not like it? Or or think that that's a better picture than The Depart... The Departed. The Departed. I mean, by no means is it... A, Scorsese's most watchable movie. I mean, Goodfellas just kicks every Scorsese movie's ass ever made. I can't wait until we get to Goodfellas. (laughs) (laughs) That's going to be a fun episode. Come on, man. You can't hate on Goodfellas. You can't hate on Raging Bull, Taxi Driver, uh, which I know you haven't seen, you f***ing peasant. (laughs) And um, I think that's why you have these thoughts about The Departed. And then it's by no means Scorsese's best movie in any decade. F*** that. This movie is a charity case. Mark Wahlberg... The guy who didn't act in this movie was the best actor in this movie. That's what my thoughts about this fucking movie are. One last olive branch. Us feuders meet in the middle. Is there anything you liked about this movie? Really? Silence. Nothing. 
I'm I'm like almost upset. I wish I wish you would at least have enjoyed the movie the way I did. All right, why don't we close out with you once again singing us out as you sang us in with uh, dropkick uh, tomatoes. Yeah, with dropkick tomatoes. And put put some real passion into it, will you? this movie sucks I am wearing skirts and I am singing with these back all right thank that that was that was beautiful <laughs> that was very nice your vulnerability is really freaking me out right now <laughs> So guys, that was this week's episode of Film Feud on Khuleyam Bakhti. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in as always. Let us know what you thought about the feud. Tweet at us at Film Feud Pod. And make sure you subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Podcatchers, wherever you listen to podcasts. Or YouTube. Or YouTube. Or listen to us on YouTube. Just listen to us and tweet at us and talk to us. Please. Bye. Bye.